Hi everyone, I'm Cal Spriggs. Today I'm going to show you how I made some Warhammer 40k Desert Train, which is also suitable for Necromunda or a variety of other sci-fi settings. So I started this project with blue XPS foam that I picked up at a hardware store. Now with this, I decided to use a hot wire cutter and it proved pretty successful. Um, as you can see, I was able to get the striations that I wanted for this particular um, type of rock. I was aiming for something sort of uh, southwestern American style, a, a lot like you see in the old westerns and, and that sort of thing. So after I got that cut, as you can see, what I did was uh, bring it inside uh, and begin gluing it all together. I did do the cutting outside um, when you're using those uh, wire foam cutters. They tend to put off a lot of really noxious fumes. Uh, cutting this XPS foam, so highly recommend doing that outside or in a well-ventilated area. Um, I'm in the... Uh, I use this construction adhesive. It's a Loctite brand, but the important thing when you're using this type is to be certain that it says it's safe for, for foam. There's a lot of different types, and several of those will just straight out melt your foam if you're not careful. The other thing I recommend doing is spreading this out with a butter knife or a, a paint scraper. What I used is a old uh, busted butter knife that I had in a junk drawer somewhere. Uh, definitely don't use your, your significant other's uh, nice silverware. They don't tend to like that sort of thing. But smooth it out. Get as, as much contact surface area as you can. Um, that way, when this stuff hardens, it'll really set up well and it'll hold uh, these pieces of foam together. It's especially important when you're doing what I did with these these sort of small surface area, long, thin um, pillars that I was doing. I really don't want someone to be playing and, and knock it over and break it. So uh, get as much surface area as you can and uh, don't worry too much about using too much of this stuff. It does a good job of uh, filling the, the cracks as well, although I came in a little later and, and used some pl plaster for that too. The other thing I did here was I labeled all of the different pieces that I had cut because I was moving them from outside to inside. I didn't want to get confused as to how they all went together and end up with a puzzle I couldn't assemble, so I labeled them all and uh, even drew arrows on which side I wanted up. I did put these on MDF bases because I wanted them to be um, relatively steady, uh, especially with larger models and, and heavy Peter models. I didn't want them to be um, tipped over or knocked over too easily. With the second one, same as the first, I put on the construction adhesive, smoothed it out, and got them mounted. Uh, coming back, I wanted to close up a lot of those gaps. I just got some of the uh, plaster repair stuff at a hardware store. Uh, used that. At first, I tried using uh, a couple little tools to try and get in those cracks, and what I found really was that my finger worked just as, as well as anything else. So I just got a little bit on the a tray there so the whole jar didn't dry out, and I, I went along taking my time trying to fill all the gaps so that... Um, when I do go to paint this, I'm not going to have some, some really obvious, awkward-looking gaps. Uh, the nice thing about this plaster as well is it, it gives a fairly good texture, too, to some of those surfaces that I might have missed with uh, uh, cutting the foam as well as on the otherwise flat surface of the foam. I did come back later and add some sand and, and gravel and, and such to, to give it some texture, too. But the, the plaster adds something, at least. Uh, it's, it's better than nothing. I, I also like how, how hard this plaster dries. It does reinforce the adhesive that I used on the, on the foam. And it, it, overall, it just improves the, the look of the piece. Overall, this didn't really take very long to do. And I think it adds a lot to the, the look of the piece. Here we are. I have both... Um, the pillars as well as the, the larger rock outcropping fully plastered up. All the gaps are sealed. Um, I did use the plaster to add some texture there on the side in a couple spots where I wasn't able to get the striated look that I was looking for. One of the best parts of the plaster is it dried fairly quickly and I could move on to the next step which was getting some more texture on both the base and on areas of the rock. So I used just uh, standard PVA glue put a, a line of it down along the base, 
Um, I foolishly did not use any kind of plastic bin or any real mat when I was doing this, and while I was able to get a very good base on it with the sand, uh, you'll see here in a bit that I got sand everywhere. I'm still finding little grains of sand and grit everywhere on my workbench from this. So um, learn from my mistakes and go ahead and, and use a, a plastic bin or something when you're doing this rather than doing what I do here in about three seconds where I get the sand out and I think, oh, there's paper there. This is going to work fine. And then I dump it right all over my work desk. So um, the sand worked great. I can't complain about that. The the single eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper that I used to catch the sand did not work at all. Uh, zero stars do not recommend. But uh, learn from my mistakes. That's that's why we're here, right? To to learn from other people's experience. Um, don't don't sand on your desk. I I used a number of small rocks. Uh, I have a, a whole bunch of these. Some of them are. Uh, aquarium rocks some of them are just random gravel and and stones I've picked up um, and I while the PVA glue is still wet I put the push these into the sand tried to make them look like they're half buried part buried and it it worked pretty well on this one um, on the other one I mixed in a few larger stones and 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 smaller uh, grains of sand and such and I think that one came out a little bit better, but for both of these, it it worked pretty well, especially when I come back with uh, Mod Podge and, and lock everything down. Um, these things were shedding tiny grains of sand everywhere, um, all over the house, all over my, my work desk. But I was able to, uh, once I locked them down with Mod Podge, I didn't have any issues. Um, I set that one to the side, and as you can see, I'm, I'm sort of starting to realize that I have a bit of a sand problem, and uh, tried to tried to get what I could back into the plastic tub, but as you can see, it was not terribly successful. And then I just went along and, and did uh, PVA glue on most of the flat surfaces, as well as here and there on the, the sloping surfaces where I, I figured sand would build up as these rocks eroded naturally or as, as the wind blew stuff. So finished up that one and then I moved on to the next. As I said, I did use some, some larger stones with the other one. Um, and then once I had both of them done, I came back with some Mod Podge. I mixed up some cr just black craft paint and some Mod Podge together, uh, about a 50-50 ratio and then I just sealed everything. Um, the biggest issue with this step is making sure that since you've already got those striations cut into the uh, rock outcropping, you, you want to make sure that you don't have too much of the, the Mod Podge glooping in there and, and hiding some of your details. So I, I went over it uh, pretty thoroughly, and, and before I'd, I'd done this too, I, I tapped these off as, as well as I could to make sure any loose grains of sand or stones would just come off then. Uh, but once I I got that done, I, I went back with the Mod Podge and, and just sealed it all, painted the entire uh, rock surface and tried to do it as, as neatly as I could. As you can see, I'm using my trusty 8.5 by 11 uh, sheet of paper there that doesn't do so hot with the sand, but it, it worked fairly well for keeping the Mod Podge from dripping anywhere, important anyway. And while you're here, please remember to leave a like and subscribe as you watch me spilling sand and Mod Podge all over my desk. Now one thing with the Mod Podge is it is kind of gloopy, so you got to be sure you get it down in all the little nooks and crannies and cracks and crevices. So there's a lot of me turning this object every which way, trying to make sure I had all this, the spots on it and trying to make sure I hadn't missed any of the foam. This is especially important if you're using spray paint on XPS foam or any other styrofoam. Here I was, I was painting it all by hand so it wasn't as important, but the Mod Podge does add a lot of structural integrity to uh, XPS foam and it'll help it last a lot longer uh, with, with gaming. So I um, highly recommend you, you take your time and make sure you get all of it. Um, I ended up doing one coat of Mod Podge on the, each of these sets of rocks and I got the tips for it from Eric's Hobby Workshop and uh, Black Magic Craft.
which if you're not watching either of them, they ha both have some fantastic videos, and a lot of what I do here I, I learned from watching them. So uh, go ahead and check them out. One thing I found really interesting as I finished this up was I got a really neat black texture on both these rock formations. Um, so when I looked at them afterwards, they almost had a sort of volcanic look, which was not what I was going for. Um, and it, it changed once I got the base coat of paint on, but I, I kind of like the look of it. And I, I think one of my next projects might be a volcano type, wasteland type uh, rock formation. We'll see for now. Pretty happy with how these uh, turned out. I find one of my biggest hurdles for hobbies in general is the, the lack of free time as a parent and as an author and then also doing a full-time job. It can be pretty hard to find time not just to do craft terrain and paint models and then on top of that trying to even play the games with those neat models and terrain. But overall, like everything, it's all about trying to find a balance and Weirdly, doing the act of creating terrain makes me more likely to find time to play with it because you put all that time and effort into it, you might as well use it, right? I find a lot of the set pieces that I create can kind of give me inspiration as well in my writing where I can visualize something epic and then making it real in the, in the physical world gives me something to then want to tie it into my writing and try and make my writing match the the scale and scope of some of the things I have in my head. I was getting to the point here at the end where I was realizing that I had made far too much of my Mod Podge and um, black craft paint mix and I was going to have a lot left over which is fine. Um, the stuff isn't that expensive that's why I used craft paint not Citadel paint. The extra paint just gave me the opportunity to go back and touch up on any spots I missed and take my time on it because I had plenty of it mixed up and I did a pretty good job of coverage. The nice thing with the Mod Podge as well is it takes uh, plenty of time to dry so I didn't have to worry about that at all while I was painting it. So once I had the whole coat of Mod Podge on and it had dried I took this barn red uh, craft paint that I had and I've seen some other builds where people used um, burnt umber I believe is, is the one most people use. I, I wanted a more vibrant red, so I went with this barn red. Uh, I think it turned out really well as the base coat. Um, initially, I was concerned because it, it looked darker than I'd, I'd wanted. But um, as it went on, the two rock formations took shape really well. The red really made them pop out and, and look like sandstone in my mind. So that made the painting go a lot easier, actually. Uh, I was really dreading painting these two rocks by hand, and at the end of it, the time fat passed fairly quickly, and I really didn't even notice how long it took to, to get this coat on both the, the rocks. As I said earlier, I was going for the southwestern style look and feel to the, these two rocks. I wanted them to, to feel like something out of a western or something like you would see on Tatooine or, or something so getting the, the vibrant colors on here kind of provides that nice stark contrast to the, the sort of grim dark of, of the 40K Necromunda universe. And it's also nice because these, these are rocks that I can use for, for any setting. Uh, if I'm running a D&D &D game, if I'm, I'm setting up a, a battlefield for me to, to play through what I'm, I'm doing in an action scene in a book, um, I can I can put those up and they provide a very nice backdrop. Um, so having those vibrant colors helps to, to kind of bring it more to life and and give you that feeling of immersion, which is is what I was going for. Um, and the nice thing here is I'm using craft paint that was pretty cheap. I think I paid fifty cents for the whole bottle, and I, I had no compunctions about using the entire uh, tube of it if I needed to. So. Uh, knocked out the paint on this fairly quickly. I think it took me in all maybe about 20-30 minutes to, to paint both of these to uh, to get that base coat on anyway. And the, the other nice thing about getting this red paint on was the all the texturing that I had put on with sand and, and 
with those rocks started to, to kind of come to the fore, I, I could see them much better than against the black that I had coated them with. And it also reconfirmed for me that the Mod Podge had done its job and, and held everything in place. The, the brush I was using was pretty stiff and I didn't have any uh, flakes of sand or, or any of the rocks that I had put on there flaking off. Everything was, was holding pretty good. And then I just put another coat of paint on it so it, it should hopefully uh, stay pretty, pre pretty solidly. So, um, but yeah, I finished up that rock and then moved on to the pillars. Um, getting the, the red paint on the pillars was really cool for me too, um, even more so than the other rock because it really gave it that, that uh, impressive look that I was, I was going for when I first had the idea of making these. I also plan on doing a rock arch sort of like you would see out at Moab or, or something like that. And I'm currently working on a desert outpost that's got a, a lot of built up structures on it. So these were sort of a test run for me and, and thus far, um, as you can see, they were proven out pretty well. I, I learned a lot working on these as well, uh, especially about not spilling sand everywhere. One other thing I learned while I was working on these was that um, the hot wire cutter that I used to, to cut the XPS foam was um, really good at getting outside angles. I was able to create kind of these rounded edges, as you can see here, uh, where I'm painting, um, when I'm, I'm doing the outwardly rounded edges. But when I was trying to do um, the inward edges um, and angles, it, it did not get those same uh, quality striations. I, I normally had to either come back in like I did on this piece and, and slice those in by hand or model those in with um, plaster. And one of my concerns when I was doing this was how well the entire piece would hold up. And I was really pleased with, uh, while I was painting, that the fact that I didn't have anything break. I was, I was very concerned, that, especially with the foam, narrow foam uh, columns there on, on the smaller pillar. I was very concerned it would break and it held up really well. The construction adhesive uh, sealed it in pretty solid. The Mod Podge as well had hardened everything and, and gave it a really good structural integrity. So yeah, I overall very pleased with how this held up and it gave me a lot of ideas for future builds. One piece I was trying to carve that, that first time I was cutting these foam sections was a sort of ramp uh, spiraling ramp up up the side of a column that I was thinking I could tie into an arch or a bridge or something and that one I really struggled with um, it was it was not turning out well trying to do multiple angles I think with that that foam cutter it just didn't work out um, so here is where I, I started using khaki and um, just doing a heavy overbrushing trying to get the sandy waste look to it and this, this worked out really well. Um, it, it provided the sharp contrast I was looking for with the, the red stone, given it that, that lighter sandstone uh, colors on it, um, sort of like you would get with the natural variations of sandstone where you've got multiple layers of, of different colors and types. So I, I used this khaki overbrush pretty heavily on, on both of them. Um, at times, I think it came up a little too heavy, but I was able to uh, fix that later on with a brown wash. Um, and then you can see the yellow paint I've got next to it, um, another craft paint I got at the craft store for, I think, 50 cents. Um, so I hit it up uh, both, both rocks with this khaki color, um, and they really made the piece pop. I was able to, to really see it come together. Um, even more so than before. It, the nice thing was at this point I was on the home stretch. I knew I was almost done with the project and that kept me working on it and, and, and trying to get it done. Um, a lot of times I struggle with finishing projects, especially big bigger projects, because A, I don't have a lot of time and, and B, I, I lose interest about two thirds of the way through when I realize how much extra work there is. But um, getting the paint on these, um, first, first the the red and now with the, the overbrush I was getting excited about and wanting to finish them off and uh, really got into to focus mode and, and got a whole lot done on these uh, finished them both off that that night as I remember 
this again is where I spend a lot of time listening to, to music or, or listening to videos or uh, audiobooks. It, it keeps me um, engaged mentally while I'm, while I'm doing this. And then, yeah, I also spend a lot of time thinking, working through plot lines on, on books I'm writing and that sort of thing when I'm doing this. So very beneficial to my, my mental well-being to, to have some downtime when I'm physically engaged doing something but not necessarily having my whole brain occupied while I do it. I have to say, as I started the overbrushing, um, my immediate thought was, oh, God, I ruined the whole thing. It, it looked kind of like a... Uh, nasty looking piece of chocolate cake um, I, I kept going though I pushed that one to the side um, as I'd, I'd finished up and started over brushing the other one um, again kind of in, in turbo mode and then kind of as I watched the paint dry and, and worked on the other one I realized that they both came out looking pretty good even there and then uh squirted way too much of the yellow craft paint onto the palette but uh, managed to, to dry brush all right. Really wasn't happy with this uh, crafting brush that I was using to, for the dry brushing. I had a, a bespoke large dry brush around somewhere but I haven't been able to find it. Um, but with enough working on it on the paper towel I was able to get right about where I wanted for the yellow. And again, uh, when I, I came in later with the, the brown wash, it all worked out in the end. So uh, the yellow worked perfectly, actually. I was, I was kind of afraid this sunny yellow would be too bright. But uh, compared against that, or contrasted against that red stone, actually worked, worked really well, uh, especially after I got the brown wash on there and kind of mellowed everything out. I think if I used a a darker yellow or a less vibrant yellow it wouldn't have looked as as good actually so here's the two stones with that uh, brown wash I'm, I'm going over them with and this really connected them and, and made them look uh, pretty much exactly how I wanted um, I, I uh, made this brown wash at home because uh, trying to use the the Citadel washes or some of the other expensive washes for objects this big would be uh, kind of ridiculously expensive but uh, uh, I made this one from uh, Black Magic Craft uh, recipe uh, just a little bit of medium some water and and uh, some some brown dye uh, worked really well on this um, mellowed out the the, the yellow and, and the contrast with the red and it, it got in everywhere and, and kind of just really made it pop and as you can see with this this final uh, take, here they are out on my uh, play mat, and they just they look great. Um, they came out great. I I want to fight a battlefield over them now. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.